So I guess the burning question is, why Elmira? If it's never been done in Great Britain, where they've done every other opera by Handel many times, and if it's never had a fully professional stage performance here, is it worth doing? <laughs> I mean, that must be the question that you're asking, right? Well, it's Handel's first opera. It was written when he was in Hamburg. It is therefore a German opera, by and large, though it has some Italian in it. It's a German opera and different from his later operas that he wrote primarily in London. So it won't sound the same, and it exists in this place sort of by itself over here. Handel was born in Halle, and his father had expected and wanted him to go into the civil law and was not really interested in Handel being a musician. But he was talked into allowing the boy to have music lessons from the town cantor at the Marienkirche in Halle. Now, this is the man that Handel studied with, and the only teacher we know that Handel had. And so you need to absorb a little bit. What Handel is getting here is the traditional German musical education leading to becoming a cantor in a major city where you will take over the music that is necessary for the church performances in that city and teach in the attached school attached to the church. This is what Bach did in Leipzig. So the Handel may simply have been working toward the idea of becoming a typical German church musician. But he changed his mind. And he changed his mind very abruptly in 1703 and simply left the church position and went to Hamburg. He went to Hamburg because there was a public opera house in Hamburg. And it was a place where he could go and get involved. It wasn't a court opera where you couldn't just walk in and say, here I am, I'm a musician. But he went to Hamburg. And his friend Johann Matheson talks about him sneaking in, basically. Not, in fact, coming in and saying, I can compose, you know, give me something to do. But taking a back seat, according to Matheson, taking a back seat in the violin section, and according to Matheson, pretending that he couldn't count from one to five. So you have to imagine that, because I love that image of him. But he very quickly made a name for himself. So Handel is in Hamburg, and he's sitting in the back of the violin section, and then sort of working his way forward, becoming friends with Johann Matheson. And obviously, one of the things that would have attracted him to Hamburg would be the head of the opera, who was Reinhard Kaiser, who was perhaps the leading opera composer in Germany at that time. He was also a difficult man. Hamburg is planning for its 17.4.5 season. This is something that actually Kathy can actually feel this, I'm sure, physically, thinking about this. She has a season going, right? And there is a plan for an opera called Almira on a specific libretto, which has been specifically adapted for Hamburg. All the special ceremonial scenes have been added. It's to be composed by Kaiser. The set designers are in. The costumes have come in. The singers are beginning to arrive. And Kaiser says, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Kaiser goes off to Weissenfels. He hasn't finished the opera. He simply leaves. They need someone to write this libretto because they have to use the costumes, the singers, uh, the sets, everything that's being prepared. You think you have trouble if a singer doesn't come. What do you do if the composer leaves, right? <laughs> So there, there are two choices at, you know, right at hand. Matheson is there, and he's an experienced opera composer. But he's in the midst of writing his opera, Cleopatra, which is also to be premiered in the same season. So he says, I can't do it. I'm writing this opera. I can't write this opera. So they say, OK, maybe Handel can do it. Now, Matheson says he coached Handel. You make, you know, they were really good friends. Meanwhile, Handel had become very good friends with Telemann, who was in Leipzig. And Telemann and Handel are communicating, sending letters to one another, going back and forth. So they're also communicating. And um, Handel writes this opera. 
So that is surprising enough. But in the run-up to this opera, we have an event which is of spectacular importance. Matheson's opera, Cleopatra, is now being performed. Matheson is a singer as well as a keyboard player. He takes a leading role in his own opera, Cleopatra, on the stage. And his normal procedure is, after his character dies on the stage, to come running down and take over the direction of the opera from the keyboard. <laughs> all right? Doesn't this all sound familiar to you, Kathy? I mean, it really does, you know. I mean, doesn't this just give you a sense of, like, opera production has never changed? Right. <laughs> So one night in early December, 1704, Handel will not cede the keyboard. <laughs> Handel says, uh-uh, I'm staying. And he just sits there and won't leave. And Matheson has no choice but to sort of give it up. However, they meet on the street later, and Matheson pulls his sword. So the two of them have a duel. Now, you might not believe this. <laughs> You might say, this is not possible, except that we have Handel's story as told to his biographer of 1760, and we have Matheson's story that he wrote himself. So we actually have both of them saying that this event took place, and the stories cohere to a certain extent, which is that Matheson actually had a really good parry and thrust at Handel, but the thrust was deflected or obstructed. And that's where the difference in the story is, right? Matheson says that luckily it came to no injuries because his sword was deflected by Handel's coat button. <laughs> but <laughs> Handel says, <laughs> Handel says that it came to no injuries because the sword hit the musical score he was <laughs> carrying in his pocket and therefore did not penetrate. Now, what musical score could he have been carrying around with him? He couldn't have been carrying around Matheson's Cleopatra because an entire opera score is about this thick and it couldn't have been in his coat pocket and besides which, those scores were not allowed to leave the theater. What is the score he was working on? Because the opera was going to be premiered in a month. It has to be Almira. Was, you know, folios of, you, you fold them over, you're working on them, he has it in his pocket. The, the story as told in his biography makes it clear that for Handel, this event spoke to him that in fact, it's not only that he had felt all of his life that he was destined for a career in music, it's not just that in 1703 he left Halle and said, no, I don't want to be a church musician, I want to write opera, and so he goes off to Halle with no job or no reason to think that he will be taken on, but now his life has been saved by an opera. Now, if your life has been saved by an opera, <laughs> what can you do but dedicate your life to it? Which is what Handel did. And so Almira is the first instance of Handel thanking opera for saving his life. Now how can you resist that? <laughs> you, know, you really can't resist that, right? <laughs>